We are closing out the day with our Women's Elite Squad 6. They are underway, stage number four. We'll turn it around. Oops. There we go. Ah, and already off to seeing the strategy that we saw earlier today. The rule for these farmer carry is your feet just have to cross the wooden bar. And going back and forth. Okay, let's let's first talk about these athletes, then we'll go over description and details if you're just tuning in with us here in Lane. There we go, number one. Lauren Alilia. Lane number two, our 2023 national champion, Janae DeCausson. Two, one, go! Lane number three, Marie Garcia. Lane number four, Corinna Perkins. And lane number five, Jordan Sessions. So if you're familiar with EMOMs or every minute on the minute, that is this style of stage. On the first minute, they accumulate as many farmer carries with the axle bar and weight for women's elite 245 plates. Have to use the same hand for all carries per round. So if they started round one using their right hand, they had to for that entire round. And then on the second minute, they then go to the firing line and have to use that same hand holding their pistol. So one minute of farmer carry. Then they have one minute to get through 12 shots of their rifle on our targets. We'll take a look at them really quick as they accumulate farmer carries. There's going to be three shapes on there. They'll dump two magazines per shape. So their score will be added together with the amount of farmers carries that they accumulate over the 13 minute six round event with however many targets they can get hits with. So we talk about things that are a challenge with each stage. And for this one, it's going to be that grip fatigue. Having that mandatory same hand to use per round for the farmer's carry, and then by the time they get to the firing line, that forearm, that grip is already blown up. It's just going to add accumulated fatigue over six total rounds. If they finish all 12 shots before the minute has expired, they can go back to their axle bar and reset before their farmer's carries continue. This is the start of their third round. When they are done with three rounds, they will then have a one minute reset and that's when they will load three more magazines for the three final rounds. And during that minute break, we'll check in with the judges to see what, how, or to see how many farmers carries, farmer carries they are at. Ten 
And here what you're seeing in lane one is with Lauren, if you drop the the axle bar before you make it all the way across the wooden bar or wooden beam rather, you have to do one shuttle run. So just a little penalty to encourage people to make it all the way across. Okay, we'll start at the beginning and we'll get a look at our clicker. Can I see your clicker? We got 14 here. Thank you. Can I look at your clicker? Sorry, just got to tilt my camera. 20 for Janae. Thank you. Can I look at your clicker, Sal? 21 in our center lane. Thank you. Oh, also 21. We have a tight race. 20, 21, 21. And 21, a three-way tie with three rounds left. 21, 21, and 21. Got extra ammo? You have to go get it. You have to go get it. So just a little bit of um, potential planning error. She had brought two additional rounds for her magazines instead of three. So she was communicating with some of our spectators um, over on the other side to see if they could get her 12 more rounds. Then the rule is the athlete must then go grab them. So they can collect them over in the spectator area, but she would then have to go get them over on the line where they would have entered at the beginning of the stage. Ten seconds! Three, two, So I think these one, ladies must go. be all tied up still. Get another quick check. 27. 23. Let me tilt that down. Come on, focus camera. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. going to grab it right now. Oh, look at the teamwork makes the dream work. She was able to get all of her 12 shots under the minute. So at this point, yeah, she hasn't lost any time. And she is tied for the lead right now with the amount of farmers carries. So Bree and then Jordan here all the way in the end, both started this round with 27. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. I almost wiped out. here just the way that the athletes are breathing that fatigue is starting to set in and it's also interesting to note that 
when some of the men elite were coming off, if you're familiar with CrossFit, we have a workout called Fran. Uh, it's a very, very quick sprint. And some athletes were saying that they felt like they had Fran lung from carrying the axle bar. As, as you've seen, nobody's going at a crazy fast pace. Nobody's really running, maybe a, a, a shuffle at best. But just talking about the weight, using that one hand, accumulated fatigue over 13 minute EMOM essentially is going to elevate that heart rate and potentially the elevation could be impacting some athletes as well. We are now into our last round. So this is the last minute of farmer carries and then one remaining minute for 12 shots at the firing line. We'll actually wait because this is the last minute and then we'll see what our clickers say. Actually, we've got one right here, 38. So 38 for Jordan. Let's see how some of those compare in just a moment. And 39. Dang girl. And that is time. Walk me through what, what, what happened there. I So I got my first three mags full because they were preloaded, but I forgot an extra mag in my, like a 12 rounds essentially, in my box. So I had to go have a friend help me out. It was good to have a friend there, but I'm just curious, what goes through your mind when you realize that you've made an error like that, but you're in the middle of the heat, you have to stay cool and composed how do you say like that um essentially there wasn't much more i could do unless somebody helped me out so i knew i was gonna have to pick it up with those um the carries and try to make as many points up there but at some point either someone was gonna help me out or i was just gonna have to deal with the consequences so. ultimately it didn't look like you lost any time at all on the farmer carry um, how did this weight feel especially knowing that you had to use the same hand for a full round and that same hand for the pistols yeah honestly grip wasn't too bad it wasn't something i was really thinking about it's your back your lower back trying to you know do that little deadlift on one side and you're really off balance but um, nothing too bad, nothing like a lot of the other stages, but it was definitely a good one, nonetheless. Well, congratulations. Great way to end the day. Thank you. I appreciate it. And that will close out day one of competition out here in Fairfield, Utah. Our best photo bomber, video bomber. How's your stage been all day? It's been pretty good. Um, fell behind a little bit, but then, you know, we always managed to catch up. Not sure how. It's just that magic of tactical games. The tactical games magic. Yeah. That no, was good. Uh, 
good competitors. Am I being interviewed right now? You are. Oh, You're, this is going to be this on our like YouTube on video. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good. Uh, I like the new format. Uh, so we can kind of you know reset the stage for tomorrow, but not today's competition. It looked good. Um, this uh, this is a very deceptively hard stage. You know they see the short distance, but then you know you're holding something that's 135 pounds in one hand with all your other gear on. It's uh it's gonna add up. So um, but no, it was good to see everybody come out, put it all put it on the line, 110 percent. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for our stage four recap. <laughs> That'll do it. Make sure you like and subscribe this channel. It helps us out. It helps the sport out. Share it to your friends. Uh, follow us along also on the Tactical Games Instagram account. And we will see you back here tomorrow for day two of competition.